Hello and welcome to another edition of It's Your City. I'm Bob Kroll. As I say every time when I come on It's Your City, which is every couple weeks, I happen to have the honor of and privilege of being the mayor of the greatest city in Nevada, our very own capital, Carson City. Uh, as you know, every couple weeks I, I spend a few times talking about what happened to the board meetings and what's going on around town. Uh, I don't get a whole lot of time. I get maybe 15 minutes to, to talk. Sometimes they let me go over that, so I'm going to jump right in here and talk about some happenings and talk about the board, some issues at the board, and some other things. Um, so let me just start by saying, you know, kind of some of the things I've been doing here lately, uh, individually as the mayor. Um, one, I, have, I appeared with the governor's staff before the interim finance committee of the legislature to uh, allocate funds for the creation of a technical team that would uh, oversee um, sage grouse and sage grouse habitat in Nevada. Uh, that the creation of a technical team was uh, um, recommended by the governor's committee on uh, advisory committee on sage grouse that met earlier this year, and the technical team was a very critical part of, of that recommendation. Uh, to uh, prevent listing of the sage grouse uh, as an endangered species, but at the same time protect uh, the sage grouse and its habitat. Uh, the, the advisory committee, as I've spoken before, uh, uh, came up with a plan that would allow business to, to continue uh, as, as well as protect the bird and protect our habitat. The plan was based in large part, I guess, you know, in a, in a word, based on common sense. Uh, and I'd like to say that we had a lot of cooperation from all sectors of our community uh, because we all recognize that if the sage grouse gets listed, a, a large part of uh, Nevada's economy would be hurt very, very badly. So um, I'm, I'm happy to say that the, the uh, Interim Finance Committee agreed with that and allowed for some funding of the technical team uh, in that regard. I also uh, uh, participated or was on a panel with uh, Mayor Martini of Sparks at the Governor's um, uh, Summit on tu Tourism Nevada. Uh, and we talked about uh, tourism, uh, what, what all of the uh, jurisdictions are doing in the north here about tourism. I spoke about what we're doing in, uh, regarding tourism in our little community here, as well as uh, our efforts to promote tourism throughout the region. It was a, 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 good, uh, a good afternoon. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we, we spark some interest from some of the tour operators who were in attendance at that meeting. Uh, at the same time, let me say that also in attendance at that meeting was uh, Candy Duncan, who is the outgoing director of the Carson City Visitors Bureau. I'd like to say, you know, Candy's been uh, the, the lead person uh, for years, and, and I will tell you it's probably 20 years, uh, more than 20 years. Uh, She's done an excellent job, but we will miss Candy, and we wish her well in any future endeavor she has, or if she's just going to enjoy her family. Uh, and I should also say that her father, as you may have know, was the Grand Marshal of the Nevada Day Parade. Uh, that was a wonderful, wonderful parade, and we thoroughly enjoyed meeting uh, Candy's father. Uh, while we're talking about tourism issues, um, as you may or may not know, the, the uh, Virginia Truckee Railroad is running the Polar Express again this year. It's already started. The tickets for the Polar Express have sold out, sold out at 10,700 tickets. Uh, that's a huge number of riders on the uh, Virginia Truckee Railroad. And so uh, I'd like to tell you that, you know, uh, if you haven't signed up, if you, had to, if you don't have a ticket, come out and get one, but it's going to be pretty difficult to do one, to get one now. Um, let me talk a little bit about uh, the Board of Supervisors, some things that we did uh, th this last meeting. Uh, one of the things we, we went through were comments that, this, that the, our community, and namely Carson City, presented to the Bureau of Land Management in its regional management plan. Um, it, as, as you all know, uh, we interface directly with the uh, the Forest Service on a lot of our land issues as well as the Bureau of Land Management. So it's critical that we get along well with those two agencies and work hand in hand because we are, um, you know, although we don't overlap, our jurisdictions uh, in terms of land use are right next to each other uh, on the urban interface. Um, so we had our, we put some comments into their regional management plan. A couple, three uh, points that I should raise there, want to raise uh, that were uh, pointed out by other members of our board. 
Uh, one was to make clear that uh, wild horse issues are Bureau of Land Management issues. They have the jurisdiction on, uh, on, uh, over, over wild horses. Uh, and so we wanted, we wanted to make sure that there was a clear line of delineation there because we all get calls about the horses, either good or bad, uh, but I want people to know that at the end of the day, the, the, uh, the issue with respect to the management of wild horses in, in our area rests with the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, we also, uh, 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 as Supervisor Walt mentioned, uh, we wanted to make sure that the regional plan of the BLM uh, adequately addressed issues of illegal dumping uh, on public lands, and that's something that we have to do as well here. In, uh, on lands owned by Carson City. Uh, it, it, it's a big issue. Um, I, I, hopefully nobody listening to this uh, uh, tape will, will, would ever think about uh, dumping your trash out in, in the public uh, arena, uh, but uh, it, 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 we, need to, we need to keep an eye on, on uh, Ill illegal dumping because all it does is destroy, one, destroy the environment, uh, but two, it destroys the the enjoyment of the environment by those by by the others who use who wish to use public property. Uh, finally, uh, there was an, we wanted to make sure that the Bureau of Land Management plan included uh, provisions for um, invasive weed uh, in, uh, species uh, uh, treatment, uh, which would include uh, the continued use of sheep in our area to knock down uh, uh, primarily cheatgrass in. in uh, in the hills surrounding Carson City. Uh, you will see the, the sheep uh, uh, in, on, around Sea Hill, up near Ash Canyon, and sometimes in Gonai Canyon, or over the hill where we ask sheep to come. We ask sheep, yeah, we don't really ask them, we kind of move them there. Uh, to the, the, there's a particular time when cheat grass is particularly appealing to, to, to sheep, when they can eat that and uh, knock down cheat grass uh, at, as uh, which reduces the fuel load immensely uh, on, the, on the urban and rural interface areas. Uh, we want to make sure that that uh, practice can continue. And while I'm on that issue, um, let me say that Carson City was singled out on the Discovery Channel uh, in, in September for, and, and singled out and, and in fact highlighted for its use of sheep uh, in, in the, uh, the fuel load management and also uh, well, primarily in the fuel load management as being an environmentally sound practice uh, to which we are to be commended. And so I commend uh, the, our, our, our sheep owners uh, and our, and our uh, environmental staff here in Carson City for coming up with uh, just a tremendous plan to uh, uh, help reduce the fuel load in the rural urban interface. Um, and it's kind of nice, I think, to, you know, sometimes people get bothered by noise of sheep baying and braying, I guess is the word. Um, but I kind of like to hear that. And, and, uh, so, you know, when you're out walking around, you don't want to disturb the sheep. Uh, but it uh, kind of reminds you of where we came from. So uh, that, that's what we uh, presented for the Bureau of Land Management. At the Board of Supervisors, we also uh, took up the issue of doing a rate design study for our water and sewer rates. It's, the study is designed to be revenue neutral and by that it means it's not designed to increase or decrease rates but to look at whether or not the water and sewer rates fairly and equitably uh, assess costs uh, between users and so uh, uh, we will have a look at that. Uh, part, of the, part of the impetus for looking at the rate design issue is, uh, was raised by a constituent about our sewer rates in particular uh, during the winter months um, as you know, sewer rates are tied to water consumption. And last year when we had a very uh, uh, dry winter uh, and the weather was uh, uh, not very cold, a lot of people were told to, you know, if you wanted to protect your trees and, and lawn and things, uh, to water uh, during the winter months, which in turn turned around and, and increased sewer fees during the winter months when normally you'd think that you're um, your sewer rates would go way down because the water usage is down. So we want to take a look at seeing if there's a way to flatten out uh, the sewer rates uh, throughout the year so that you don't have um, that type of uh, disturbance in, in, in weather patterns. So um, we'll take a look at that and see what uh, these folks 
come up with uh, in, in, term, in terms of whether or not our rate design is adequate or needs to be tweaked for both sewer and water. And uh, while we're talking about sewer, um, the, the sewer plant in, Nevada, in, in Carson City is, is uh, uh, let's put it like this, it's kind of getting like me, a little old, uh, and uh, it's starting to show its wear. So we will be taking a look next year at uh, our sewer plant and, and taking a look at any needed repairs that we have to do with respect to uh, uh, our waste discharge in, in Carson City. Let me also say that uh, another thing that's going on around Carson that, that was not in the, uh, on the board meeting, but uh, as I mentioned during either last, uh, you know, one of the last uh, times I was on uh, uh, ACCTV was the issue of whether or not uh, uh, we should impose a restriction of three dogs uh, in, in and around, well, th that you could only own three dogs in, in Carson City to resolve the problem between the zoning ordinance which allowed three dogs and no more and, uh, and our animal control ordinance which would theoretically allow uh, more than three dogs if you had a permit. Um, I'm told that it either has happened or it will be happening that there's a community forum going on uh, conducted by Marina Works who oversees the animal shelter uh, to talk to the community about you know what what they think about um, animal control issues in our community and uh, with an idea that you know we if we can gain some sort of consensus on the issues that are out there and some sort of consensus on how to address those issues we can amend uh, and modify our animal control code or our zoning code as, as applicable. Uh, also, while we're talking about citizen group input issues, uh, our, our, the planning division has been has held a, a, a local meeting of business owners and others in, uh, uh, in downtown regarding a, uh, some thoughts and proposals to temporarily or at least uh, experimentally try moving uh, the number of lanes through certain sections of downtown Carson City from four lanes to two, uh, which would entail um, Taking down the fences along the sidewalk where we where the uh, the uh, lanes would move down to, to two lanes instead of four, and and uh, either creating diagonal or parallel parking. The idea was to see if, you know what what the business owners and what others thought would be the best way to uh, continue to attract uh, folks to come down to the downtown uh, because with the freeway happening, you, we need to be able to to have a, a draw for people to get off the freeway and come and visit our, our, our community. Uh, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. I, I don't, as of this taping, I don't know the results of that. Um, but in whatever we're trying to do, we're, we kind of have the best of both worlds right now. We know what's going to be happening in terms of, the, you know, the, that there will be a freeway uh, completed at some, some point in time and hopefully sooner rather than later. And we need to plan for that. And if we can do some experiments with that that are not very costly, then we should uh, try to do that to see, uh, you know, what works and what might not work for our community. And let me say just a couple numbers uh, that, uh, you know, are, are uh, so I guess particularly interesting to me, maybe hopefully to you, was that the traffic count on Carson Street in 2009 was 28,800 and some odd cars. Uh, this last year in 2012, it's been 18,000, or 35% uh, less than 2009. Uh, and with the uh, development of the of the Rube Street, uh, uh, with development of Rube Street amenities along the uh, north of William Street, as well as the uh, extension of Stewart Street, there there's a potential of of, rem of uh, alleviating traffic even more so off of Carson Street. Uh, so we'll see where those things go. Um, there'll be more meetings, as I said. Hopefully these are things that we can do on an experimental basis to see if they work, that, and if they don't work, uh, we can do with very little cost and we can try other things. But the idea is to make our downtown um, a more livable, walkable, um, friendly place to be for not only those of us who live here, but for visitors who come to Carson City. Let me conclude by saying uh, this, this taping starts off the Christmas holiday season, and I want to wish everyone uh, a, a great Christmas season. 
It's a, it's a time for family, faith, food, fun, a lot of other things. And we have a lot of things going on in Carson, uh, in, in the ice rink, other things that are happening. Uh, it's a great time of year. It's a time of year that I look forward to. I look forward to. Uh, it's also a time of year, though, where, where uh, there are those uh, who are in need. Uh, it, it can be a difficult time of year, and our faith-based and volunteer communities in, 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 our, in Carson City do a wonderful job in, in uh, looking out at, and looking out and helping those who are in need during uh, this time of year. And I would encourage you, as I encourage myself, if you know someone who's in need or a family that's in need, uh, lend a helping hand, and let's all make it, a, uh, make it a wonderful Christmas for everyone in our community. Uh, and we should also remember that there are members of our community who are serving in the military, who are in harm's way in places uh, that some we know about and some we may not know about. Uh, and we should keep them in our thoughts always because those folks probably cannot be home for Christmas. Um, and we want to remember them, keep them in our thoughts, keep them, give, give good thoughts so that they are, are safe and they know that we are thinking of them and we wish them well. So uh, that's about it for uh, this taping of It's Your City. I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you uh, for what you do to make Carson City a better community. Uh, we are indeed a community. We're not just a collection of neighborhoods, but we are a community that pulls together, uh, and, and I'm very proud of that. And so and I'm proud of all that you do uh, for, for making it a better place to live, work, and play. And, and uh, I will see you in a couple weeks when we get a little bit closer to Christmas. And again, on behalf of the mayor's office, thanks again for everything that you do. Thank